Shalom. First and foremost, as always, giving all praise, honor, and glory unto the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha HaKodash. Double honors unto the apostles, the bishops, and the elders of Great Millstone that have taught us his truth and that continue to rule well. And peace and blessings go out to the hopeful members of the elect scattered throughout the four winds of the earth that are in the hopes of receiving salvation and mercy during the time of Jacob's trouble and that are also worshiping the Heavenly Father in sincerity, in spirit, and in truth. All right. Now, this will be a fairly quick lesson just speaking about uh, the article that you see queued up on your screen regarding a new uh, defense bill that was passed by uh, the House of Representatives regarding a military draft that's going to consist of both women and men from the age group of 18 all the way up to um, 26, if I'm not mistaken. All right. And the main point that I want to drive within this uh, lesson is the fact that um, and I'm also land backing on a lesson that the beloved elder Dimashapat from Indianapolis had made regarding matter of fact, real quick right here. Hard decisions will be made, which he also, you know, throws this article in there. Well, it's not the same article, but he brings light to this uh, bill being passed. But as we understand, we're coming into a time where the hour of temptation is right around the corner. All right. Jacob Shovel is at the precipice of coming to pass. All right. And... For us brothers and sisters that wholeheartedly believe sincerely in the word of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, all right, we understand that we prophesy in part and we know in part, but when it comes down to the set lot that every one of us are going to fill, we don't necessarily know what's going to happen, all right? And it could very well happen that some of us get drafted into this uh, lot, okay, of being taken from our home being sent to these camps where these, you know, people are sent to the military, okay? But something that we got to understand as believers, that understand what's going to unfold in these latter days concerning prophecy, is that we're coming to a point where our faith is going to be tried, all right? And most importantly, we're going to be used as vessels, all right, that the Heavenly Father is going to use as sacrifices for the purpose of establishing the word of his testimony, man. All right? And that's the kind of mindset that we should have when it comes to seeing things like this. All right? Because speaking as a man, all right, as a brother that fits the age category for this bill, all right, the flesh jumped at me. You know, I was like, damn, you know, is the Lord really going to do this to brothers? And, you know, of course, the first instinct was like, hell no, you know? But then the spirit had me to look at uh, the elder Dimashapat's video and, you know, it put me in a different perspective of understanding that anything could happen, all right? But the number one mindset that we should have, all right, that Yahweh Shai had is allowing the will of Yahweh, all right, by Hashem Yahweh Shai to be done, okay? Because we're coming to a time where we're going to enter into the same a uh, dark hour that our Lord Yahweh Shai had, all right, of being betrayed, of suffering on a very high level, okay? It's going to come in a way where it's going to seem very unfair to you. It's going to come in a manner where you're just going to be consumed with grief if you're not walking and living off a of sheer faith, man, all right? So with that, Lord's will, this is an edifying lesson to you, brothers and sisters. The first scripture that I want to grab is in the book of uh, Luke, the 21st chapter, and beginning at verse 12, all right? It says, matter of fact, I'll start up, up above one uh, verse. It says, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, all right, and famines and pestilences, and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven all right verse 12 but before all these so before the destruction comes to babylon the great before complete pandemonium is within every city all right in all 50 states of babylon the great okay america this is what's going to come to pass they shall lay their hands on you 
all right, and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my namesake, all right? Verse 13, and this is the point. And it shall turn to you for a testimony, okay? So the Heavenly Father very well could put us in this position, okay? And it's all done and said for the purpose of establishing and glorifying His name, all right? And this is something that we have to spiritually prepare ourselves, man. All right? Make ourselves ready to the battle under the means of putting on the whole armor of righteousness. All right? Of putting on wisdom, of putting on uh, knowledge, and above all, upholding the shield of faith. All right? Spoken of in what? The um, book of Ephesians 6 chapter. All right? This is what we, some brothers may have to go through. You know? But just always having in the back of our head that with whatever the Lord puts us through, with whatever happens, keeping your prayers up, man. Asking the Heavenly Father to give us the spirit to endure whatever happens, all right? Because we're coming to a point where, as the beloved uh, brother Partham always uh, says, the rubber is about to meet the road, man, all right? This inward man that we've been praying, that we've been preparing, excuse me, since the very first day that we came into this truth, since the Heavenly Father called us into His ministry, we've been preparing ourselves for situations like this, all right? And we're coming to the point where we're about to, like I said, all right? Where our rubber is about to meet the road. And we're going to have to be living off of sheer faith, as Habakkuk had said, all right? Matter of fact, let's get that real quick, all right? Because even, you know, considering this uh, bill, this is unlawful as hell, all right? Pursuing to Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter, okay? The men of war from our nation couldn't have a fearful heart within them. Because if that was the case, they would, uh, you know, spread that spirit of fear. And they weren't able to focal, uh, focalize on the mission at hand and within this weak ass society your modern day uh you know man or woman from the age of 18 through 24 and up they're weak as hell within the inward man all right they got no backbone they're soft as uh <laughs> like the beloved elder uh Mawatazak says they're soft as baby shit all right this is habakkuk 2 verse 4 it says uh, behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. Talking about Esau, Edom, coming down with great wrath. All right? And the modern day Edomites are the so-called white people. All right? The ones that govern the earth and that are pushing forth this wicked vibration. Okay? And in order for us, brothers and sisters, to combat this, all right? Faith is what we're going to be living off of, man. All right, as it is written, second half, but he, excuse me, but the just shall live by his faith. All right, and this is the power that Yahweh through his son Yahweh Shai has given us, man. All right, through that sacrifice that our Lord gave up, not only do we have, you know, spiritual blessings like prophecy and understanding, but we have a uh, strong consolation, okay? A comforter that gives us comfort in any kind of situation that we find ourselves in. Matter of fact, let's get that real quick. Um, I believe that's in the book of Hebrews. Or, uh, matter of fact, let me do this. Let me just look it up in the blue letter for the purpose of just fighting a little quicker. All right. And this is ultimately a vessel that we can, we have to start. You know, of course we do use it on a day-to-day -day basis, but more than ever do we have to start exercising this comforter more and more, man. All right? It's called the comforter for a reason. There is one in 
matter of fact, yeah, there's one of both of these uh, books. Matter of fact, let me get this one. It's 2 Thessalonians 2 and 16. It says, I'll start at 15. It says, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and 15. It says, Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. All right? And this mirrors what Yahweh tells us in Revelation 3 and 10. Revelation, you know, 2 and 10. All right? Of keeping the word of his patience. Okay? It says, verse 16. Now our Lord, Yahweh Shech HaMashiach himself, and Yahweh even our Father, which has loved us, and has given us an everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Okay? Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. All right? And that's exactly what we have at the tip of our fingers, man. All right? A comforter that is predicated upon a sure foundation. All right? Something that is sealed upon two immutable things. Matter of fact, yeah, let's get the one in Hebrews before I keep uh, quoting it. Matter of fact, Hebrews 6. I think I saw it in this chapter, Hebrews 6. And uh, 17. It says, uh, We're in the Heavenly Father, willing more abundantly to show unto us, I'm sorry, show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of His counsel, confirmed it by an oath, all right? And as we understand, the Heavenly Father is is not like a man that should lie, okay? That by two immutable things, meaning unchangeable, something that cannot be altered, in which it was impossible for the Heavenly Father to lie, we might have a strong consolation, all right? Who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, all right? Matter of fact, let me read that in the NLT real quick. It says, So God has given both His promise and His oath. These two things are unchangeable, all right? Because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to Him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold the hope that lies before us, all right? So wherever we are, whatever position, predicament that the Heavenly Father puts us within, we have this everlasting consolation at the grip of our fingers, Akiam, and you few sisters, all right? We're about to experience something very uh, straight, okay? As uh, the beloved Apostle Tahar, he had made a very beautiful lesson uh, this day regarding how we're seriously going to be tested, okay? We're about to lose everything that we have, brothers. Okay? What we stand for is something that puts us out of uh, uh, out of variance. Okay? We're the number one enemy upon Esau's hit list, man. Alright? And he's going to do everything in his ability to try and manipulate us and bow down to his image. Alright? But as it is written... The Heavenly Father has reserved 7,000 men that have not bowed down to the image of Baal. And them same spirits are here today, compromising of 144,000, as well as one-third, all right, consisting of women, children, and friends of the prophets, okay? And the main driving force that they're going to have in their spirit is this everlasting consolation that's going to keep, keep them pushing forward, no matter whatever the hell gets in front of them, man, all right? As King David had written in Psalms uh, 139, okay, wherever he was, he understood that the Heavenly Father was right there looking right at him. Matter of fact, let's get that next. Real quick in Psalms uh, 139. I think it's Psalms 139. Yep, Psalms 139 and let me 
start at a good spot. Um, Psalms 139 and 6, it says, Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. All right? It is high. I cannot attain unto it. All right? Excuse me. And that also goes into the fact that the thoughts of the Heavenly Father are too high for us to comp uh, comprehend. All right? That's why it behooves us to just get down with whatever the hell the Heavenly Father has coming and accept it, man. All right? Because within every temptation, as it is written, the Heavenly Father has has an escape rope waiting us, man. All right? The only way to find it, though, is by us living off a of sheer faith and walking in the Spirit. Okay? Verse 7. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I free, uh, flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. Alright? If I make my bed in hell, meaning the grave down in the earth, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Okay? If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee, for thou hast possessed my reins. All right? Let's get that word for possessed real quick, man. All right? The Lord has possessed the reins of the elect. Word possessed goes back to the Strong's age 70, 69, uh, Kwana. All right, to get, acquire, create, buy, possess. All right, of the Heavenly Father originating, redeeming his people. All right, so the elect are sealed. Okay, and this is referring back to the wisdom that uh, David was speaking about. It's so magnificent. To the point where he was just like, damn, you know? And as we're now living in a time where we have more wisdom than the prophets of old, all right? We understand by faith that we've obtained the victory, okay? All we got to do simply now, brothers, is to live what the word of our testimony has to offer, all right? And that's going to the straight gate. That's enduring hardness as a good soldier and remaining faithful unto death okay and it's easier said than done but right now we're going through a process of the lord purging us for the purpose of perfecting this mindset okay next let's get the word reigns real quick uh goes back to the strong's age concordance 3629 uh kalaya all right and it says, um, a physical organ. Mm, look at that. Of seat of emotion and affection. All right? Reigns. It says, figuratively, the mind. So the Lord has possessed our mind. <laughs> okay? To the point where we are not going to bow down to the image of Baal. Okay? And when all hell breaks loose, as long as we remain faithful... We continue to be diligent servants, all right? When the enemy comes down like a great flood, that's when the Lord is going to lift up a standard upon us, man. And he's going to possess the reign of our mind, okay? So let's read that again. That's a beautiful definition. Uh, that might be the title of this, uh, you know, lesson. It says, verse 13. For thou has possessed my reins, all right? Thou has covered me in my mother's womb. And that's another thing. From the beginning, as it is written in Isaiah 46 and 10, the Lord has ordained the end from the beginning, loosely paraphrasing, okay? So with whatever you're going through, no matter how dire of a situation it may seem, like I said, the Lord has an escape rope waiting for you okay it says verse uh, <laughs> let me read that second half of 13 again man it says thou hast covered me in my mother's womb as 
it tells us in the first chapter of Jeremiah, the Heavenly Father had already ordained Jeremiah to be a prophet. Same thing with the elect. The Heavenly Father from the beginning has already ordained who is going to receive salvation. All right? But do we know who is going to receive salvation? No. Of course we know the elect, but guess what? For us brothers that are following the legacy and reputation of the name of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai and are surnaming themselves after Jacob, we have a good shot at that calling, man. All right? Right now, all we got to do is make our calling and election sure by continuing to put ourselves up as a living sacrifice. Okay? Verse 14, it says, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. All right? My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret. All right? So, prior to you even having a spirit within your earthen vessel, the Lord had already as <laughs> deep, okay? When you were still in your, you know, your dad's sack, then the Lord knew who you were. All right? And curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written. Which in, in continuance were fashioned when as yet there was none of them. All right? How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. All right? And this is the mentality that we should have when it comes to certain scenarios like this goddamn uh, defense bill. All right? No matter where we are, the Lord's going to be there for us, brothers. All right? Providing for us, taking care of us. All right? Once again, we don't know how or what's going to happen. But we know for a surety that the Lord is going to take care of his man. All right? So with that, let's end off with uh, that scripture that we were reading in Hebrews, the sixth chapter. And close out on that. Because there was one more verse that we didn't hit. Hebrews 6 and reading 18 again. In the NLT it says, So God has given both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence, all right, as we hold to the hope that lies before us. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls, okay? An anchor that's going to keep us sturdy, all right, when the winds start blowing. When the water starts hitting our uh, house, as it tells us in Luke the sixth chapter, all right? As long as we're building our house upon this sure foundation, all right, upon this rock, Yahawashai, we're going to stand firm, man, okay? <clears throat> it says, uh, it leads us through the curtains into God's inner sanctuary. All right. Verse 20. Yahawashai has already gone in there for us. He has become our eternal high priest in the order of Malak Tazadak, Melchizedek, which means king of righteousness. All right. And that's another uh, comfort that should, you know, give you the umph and the vigor to continue to push forward, man. All right. Yahawashai is our foreign that has already done it for us, meaning that the victory has already been gotten, as I said earlier, okay? All we got to do is just remain faithful, all right, trust in the Lord, and continue to do what we got to do, man, all right? Because this place is going down, okay? So with that, man, Lord's will, this was an edifying lesson to you, brothers and sisters, once again. Uh, I didn't want to make this too quick, just edifying upon a point that, uh, you know, the Spirit had me to speak about. Because, you know, when these things happen, the flesh may kick in, all right? But once you take a step back, you put yourself in the spirit of being still 
and you look at things under the spirit, you understand the Lord is going to take full control of whatever the hell predicament you're in, man. All right. And another beautiful testimony that is um, Cornelius. All right. When Cornelius was praying and fasting unto the Heavenly Father, giving his, you know, tithes, there came a point where the Lord uh, heard his prayer, you know, and the Spirit spoke to him to go get Peter, ask for Peter, and he's going to lead you to find Yahawashai. All right. And that's exactly what happened. Okay. Same things like that could very well happen for brothers that may go through that lot. Okay. So with that, giving all praise, honor, and glory once again to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachah Double honors unto the apostles, the bishops, and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings unto the elect. Shalom.